Let's now calculate the average momentum for the particle in a box. So in order to calculate the expectation value, the average value of momentum, we need the operator for momentum. And the operator for momentum is going to be p hat, which is minus i h bar, uh, first derivative with respect to x. And we showed this in the original video on operators, how you can arrive at this half, this has to be the operator for momentum. But let's just go ahead and use that. So the expectation value of momentum, its average value, is going to be the integral of, uh, and in general this would be minus infinity to infinity, but our wave function is only non-zero between zero and L. So we're only going to integrate between zero and L. And then <coughs> we need psi star, the the wave function's complex conjugate, but in this case it's just real at all values, so we can just put in the wave function itself. Sine n pi x over L, the wave function for the particle in a box. Then we have the operator, minus i h bar d dx, and that operator is going to act on the wave function then. Sine, the, need to put in the normalization constant there square root of 2 over L sine n pi x over L and then all of that integrated with respect to x. Okay, so going to the next line we can pull out the 2 square root of 2 over L to give a 2 over L and we can pull out the i h bar to give minus i h bar 2 over L, integral 0 to L dx. Then um, we have to act on it with this operator. Uh, differentiating a sine is going to give us a cosine, but then there's an argument within the sine, and by the chain rule we're going to have to bring out an n pi over L. So we're going to get another factor of n pi over L that comes out. And then we have sine n pi x over L, cosine n pi x over L. Okay, so the integral, which is what we're looking for in this case, is going to be an integral that looks something like sine kx times cosine kx. And if we look up the value of this integral or use some type of um, integral generating software to look up its value, we'll get something that looks like minus 1 over 2k cosine squared kx. Okay, and then this is going to be evaluated, um, k in this case being equal to n pi over L. So this not being a video on integrals, I'll just skip to the results. If you evaluate this with k equals n pi over L at both L and 0, what you're going to end up finding is that you have you get the same value at both ends of, of this side here. So what you end up getting once you fully solve that integral out set the expectation value for momentum equals zero. So on average the particle isn't moving forward or backward, it's just staying put where it is. Or you can say it's equally likely that the particle is moving to the right or to the left. Now this makes sense because at any given point in time we've got this large amount of density that's kind of out in the middle here or at higher solutions you have more and more peaks of that. but since the average position we showed isn't changing over time, it makes sense that the average momentum is zero because if your position isn't changing, then you you have no average you have no velocity on average, so you have no momentum on average as well. And we can continue on from here and calculate what the expectation value for momentum squared would be. So applying 
an op applying the square of an operator is equivalent to applying that operator twice. So if we have our integral here, which we'll set up again in the same way, we have that same square root of 2 over L sine n pi x over A. But now for our operator p hat squared, that's just applying p twice. It's applying momentum twice. So we have minus i h bar d dx and then apply it again, minus i h bar d dx. So what we get when we substitute that in to the expression below is we have the two minus i's multiplied together and just give us minus h bar squared second derivative with respect to x and that's again acting on the wave function square root of 2 over l sine n pi x over a. Okay so that's that's our integral that's what we need to solve um, first of all we need to get those differential operators out of there so pulling out whatever constants we can uh, as we have always had in this case uh, the normalization constant squared it's going to give us a 2 over L factor and we have the minus h bar squared factor that we can pull out from right there and then uh, applying this differentiation twice that's going to give us a minus sine back but it's also going to give us if this is sine kx it's going to give us a minus k squared sine kx so it's going to give us n pi a n pi over a quantity squared when we differentiate twice so that's going to give us a minus sign because we'll get a minus sign out of there n squared pi squared over L squared. Oh, sorry, I was calling this A. This is this is what I'm always referring to as L. Okay, so referring to that as L. And then we have the integral again, dx. And then our integral just reduces down to sine squared n pi x over L. Okay, so the integral that we're interested in in this case is an integral looking like sine squared kx. So sine squared kx with respect to x. If we look up the value of an integral such as this, what we end up seeing, if I can find it down here, is that you get a term that looks like x over 2 minus sine 2kx over 4k. Now once again, once we've integrated this, we're going to evaluate this function at 0 and L and, have, and take the difference there, as you do in all definite integrals. And you'll see that the value of this at x equals L and x equals 0 if again we're substituting in that k equals n pi over L to give us our specific integral that this value is going to be 0 at both ends so we can in fact just not worry about that one you can crunch through the algebra yourself and see that but what we're gonna have is that the expectation value of momentum squared equals all of these constants we had, this minus and that minus, are going to end up canceling out. So we have a 2, we have a, a, an h bar squared, pi squared, we have an n squared. Then this l squared and that l combines for an l cubed. And then this is all going to be multiplied by this x over 2 which is evaluated at L and at 0 so we get an L over 2 minus 0 so we just get an L over 2 and now this 2 cancels out with that 2 
this L cancels out and becomes an L squared here. So our final result for the expectation value of momentum squared is h bar squared pi squared, let me do the pi first, n squared over L squared. And this should make sense because if we take momentum squared and just divide it by 2m, we will get uh, kinetic energy, which for a particle in a box is the only kind of energy we have because there's no potential energy. So dividing this by 2 times the mass of the particle should give us the total energy. And indeed, you can see that this relates to the original total energy that we have uh, for all the different solutions, and it just very and it just differs by the factor of 2m. So then, looking at the uncertainty, get a different color. The uncertainty in momentum or variance for now as we saw for position before is calculated the same way for momentum it's the expectation value of momentum squared minus the square of the expectation value of momentum so substituting those two in we have h bar squared pi squared n squared over l squared our expectation value here was just zero so that's minus zero so in order to get the uncertainty in momentum, which is just the standard deviation, it's the square root of the variance, we just have to take the square root of that, which is going to be h bar squared pi squared and squared over l squared. Luckily, these all have squares on them. So we just get h bar pi n over l. So our final result for the uncertainty in momentum is just h bar pi n over l. So we see that the uncertainty in the momentum is going up linearly as we go to higher and higher solutions for the particle in a box. You have a higher and higher value of momentum because as we see momentum is related to the is related to the curvature, the, uh, the slope of the wave function. So as you get more and more peaks here, as you get more and more sine functions at higher and higher values of n, you're going to get a higher and higher value uh, for momentum, and then the uncertainty in that momentum is going to increase as you go up.